Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so at first we had a talk uh, when we laugh a lot, but I would like to tell about um, a story about the case which bothered me for a pretty long time uh, because it's a story of my friend. It's a story of Sam. Uh, you know, in 2009, uh, he came to me and said, Anna, I can't wait to die. I asked him the most stupid question one could ask in such a situation. Why? And he said, uh, I have nothing to look forward. I have nothing to desire. And you know, that's what, that was interesting because he had everything. He had a car, uh, a flat in the center of the city, a dream work. Uh, he could afford travel anywhere in the world and buy almost everything he want. But he was unhappy. And uh, uh, the research has been conducted in 2011 uh, comparing uh, two types of countries. One is consumer's paradise, when people could afford everything, and another one is consumer hell. So the situation was opposite. You know what they found? People in hell are happier than people in paradise. Um, so Sam wasn't the unique person in this aspect. And well, he's a human like everybody else. And um, you know, as a human, we share a mechanism. It is right here inside of our brain. Um, it consists, it is an engine, yeah? Uh, it consists of uh, nerve cells, hardware, which runs on various neurotransmitters, dopamine. So this aging I want, I want moves generations and generations. You know, sometimes I think if not for that aging in our mind, in our brain, um, most probably we would live in stone age still. But we have it. And um, it, go, uh, it went through evolution, developed through evolution uh, in such a way to support people, to make them more productive, to make them move forward. But um, what I found out in my research is that sometimes the modern uh, economic system, uh, well, there is a significant violation of the principles of work of that aging, uh, which makes people make a typical consumer's mistakes, which prevent or will, which make them not that happy. So Sam did all those mistakes, or well, some of those mistakes. And the first one uh, was using the option buy now, pay later, too often. What has been found is, uh, well, in various researchers on monkeys and humans, that when we are waiting for something, there is an enormous amount of dopamine, hormone of happiness, is generated inside of our brain when we want something, when we are looking forward to get it. So the blue line on the graph. And when we compare the amount of dopamine generated on uh, the stage of uh, anticipation and the amount of dopamine on the stage of consumption, the consumption itself won't bring as much happiness as the anticipation. And that's an important aspect. Uh, so what Sam did, he used credit, credits very often, credit cards, per, uh, purchasing everything he wanted. Uh, when he bought a car, he was definitely happy, but for a short while. After that, happiness was gone, but the debt was still there. So that's why my first advice to Sam was, if it's not the question of life and death, do not use the option buy now, pay later. You know, I suspect that about a million people in the world will hate me right now. Um, another uh, mistake which Sam did was, well, he made a purchasing of uh, valuable goods, a routine. You know, it's pretty similar to the, uh, to the medical term tolerance, uh, which means that sometimes we need um, 
increase of amount of medication we take, for example, a painkiller, pain due to get the same effect. So talking about Sam, I could observe that. When he bought his first branded suit, he was extremely happy for about a month. Uh, nothing destroyed his good mood because I have a brand suit. When he bought the second brand suit, he was as happy. But the 10th brand suit wasn't a big deal. So you may tell me, um, well, brand suit, it's really no big deal. But I will tell you that the same thing happened when he bought the car. So his third car, again, was nothing special. And uh, because of that, uh, my suggestion to him uh, was, well, basically, uh, basically these four suggestions. First, if you, um, um, if you really want to buy something, if you really have the money to spend and you have the urge to spend, well, I guess some of you know that urge, uh, spend it on somebody else. Research shown that this brings more happiness and people generally happier than they spend on somebody else. Um, second question, if you really like something, buy it rarely. Um, just to avoid tolerance. Yeah, imagine if you have your favorite, don't know, bakote, durian, uh, ice kachang, and you eat it every day. I bet within a week or two, you won't, uh, you won't be so excited about eating it, right? Um, so uh, the third uh, suggestion I gave to him uh, was buy, uh, buy a small amount of goods so that you can go and purchase those goods more often. Yeah, well, so if you have time. Uh, and the fourth question was buy something inexpensive. Again, research has shown that it doesn't matter how much uh, money we spend on what we buy. We will still be very happy. Um, another aspect is that, uh, or another mistake which Sam did, he spent his money on material things. But there are a number, number of research which shown that there is something which can improve with time which can change its shape and meaning with time, which can be uh, or have the same value when we compare this item of ours with the item of our neighbor, because this is the item which has been created specially for you. I'm talking about experience. Yeah, that's why I advised Sam. Uh, Get the experience, spend money on experience, less on material goods, more on experience. Buy a dinner uh, with the friends, have a holiday. Uh, and one, uh, one suggestion I gave to him, one more suggestion is buy a gym membership with the good trainer and the good spot wear. Because it has been proven, scientifically proven, that regular exercises uh, improve the generation of all those happiness neurotransmitters in our head. But experience, it also has its limitations. Um, for the last 30 years, people have been overwhelmed with a variety of experiences. Yeah, because when we watch te television, when we read books, newspapers, walk on the street, see the advertising, it's all the experience. Yes, yeah, so because, well, we have all that, and, well, the threshold of happiness rises up, which means we need better impressions, more goods to make us stay happy. Uh, so because of that, so many people, then they don't do anything special, then they, don't, uh, then they are not constantly stimulated, they get bored and unhappy. So does it mean that overstimulation is bad? I think not at all. What it means is that we have the generation, we have a huge amount of people in the world uh, whose I want aging, 
that one in our brain works more effective. If you will take the random person on the street uh, and compare their aging, and if you had such a chance to take the average person from the street 10 years back, you will see that aging in modern person is better, stronger, and that able to dream big and achieve extremely big things. That's why I think it's an absolutely good point. Uh, that's why my suggestion to Sam was search for the dream. You are absolutely able to form one and to achieve one. The only problem is when Sam started searching for the dream, uh, he went to the shopping mall again and started purchasing some goods, calling me and telling Anna, I'm bad. So I asked myself and addressed psychological books, uh, what is going on there? And I realized that actually Sam's brain was occupied with purchasing, not in, with searching for the, well, for the new dream, for the good dream. You know, we constantly, we constantly want to be stimulated. I already told about that. We constantly want those impressions and we feel lonely, we feel uh, bored when we don't get that stimulation. But you know what the researchers found recently? Is that the same brain with the same aging, they have a very interesting network. It calls default network. It got active when we are not stimulated with external events and factors. And the good thing about that default network is from outside, it seems like the person is wasting time, doing nothing, but actually inside, well, there is a very active work going on inside, helping us to find unusual ideas, unusual solutions, and that default network may help us to find that solution. Yes, yeah, so what Sam did? He just didn't, had, uh, didn't give he, himself a chance to activate that default network. And you know, uh, most of us do. We have that uh, amazing, uh, uh, amazing uh, gift from, from the world, that aging in our mind. It's the best sport car we will ever have. Um, it is able to bring us as far as we want. It is able to make as many things as we want. But what would happen if we will constantly use the car? It will be broken sooner. Yeah, that's why sometimes we need to place the car into the garage just to let it rest. That's the default network I'm talking about. That's why my last suggestion to Sam was let yourself get bored. Stop stimulating yourself. Uh, don't run after the impressions. Don't run away from your unhappiness. Let you stay in that state. But just keep in mind that you are looking for bigger meaning, for bigger dream, and you will definitely find it because it's inside of you as it is inside of every human being. So, and Sam was looking. He was looking for two and a half years. Long time for unhappiness, yeah. So it's pretty tough to stay two and a half years being not happy at all. But, well, he did that and he found his dream. Well, he lives in the same flat with the same car. Um, he, um, he is at the same work, doing the same things but now he has his dream. He doesn't know when this will happen, uh, when this dream will come true. Yeah, so that's why the enormous amount of dopamine and other good neurotransmitters produced in, uh, in his brain, expecting to, uh, for this good thing. And that's why his engine keep running and Sam is happy. And, well, I hope 
uh, that he will stay happy and he will get the dream. And when he will complete uh, that dream or will achieve uh, his goal, he will find another one and will stay happy for a long while. Because there is a very famous Russian saying, um, humans are for happiness as birds are to fly. So I wish happiness to you all and have a nice day.